Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another day here at home with APS. I'm Miss Jacobson, and I'm glad to see all your smiley faces. There might be some sleepy faces out there, but I hope you stay with us today because we've got a lot of fun things planned for you. We've got some special guests coming. We've got some great books to read. I also want to let you know that we now have our resource page up with a schedule of the topics and shows that we are doing on the APS.edu website. And the, there are links there to the YouTube channel, to all of the materials and uh, lesson pieces that you may need. Um, if your teacher is asking you to watch the shows every day and then get on the channel and take a look at certain pieces of material, all of that is now on the APS website for you. This Friday, we have a special activity coming up during the ELD hour, I believe, and that is going to be a really cool musical group. We are going to be doing something called a drum circle, and I'm really excited about that because all of us here at home with APS are going to be able to participate in that. So I hope you'll join us. But today we've got a lot planned, so we better get started. So stay tuned. We will be right back with our first class lesson at home with APS. Hello and welcome kindergarten and first grade. I'm Mrs. B and we're going to talk about the number of the day. And today our number of the day is the number 18. Say it with me, 18. Let's count up to 18. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 16, 17, 18. Let's count backwards now. Ready? 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Okay, so let's write the number of the day on the board here. Notice the number of the day has two digits. It has a one in the tens place and an eight in the ones place. So here I wrote for us tens and ones. So we have a group of ten, one group of ten, and then eight ones, eighteen. What do I mean when I say it has a group of 10. So if we look at our 10 frames here, this means that we have one 10 frame filled up. We have 10 here. And then we have eight ones to make 18. Can you spell the word 18? Let's spell it together. Ready? Say it with me. E I G H T E E N 18. Let's spell that again together. Ready? E I G H T E E N 18. Next, 
Let's draw the number 18 with tally marks. Remember, tally marks are four straight lines, and we, when we get to the fifth line to make a group of five, we will draw a diagonal line. So count with me, and draw along with me if you have your, your paper and pencil ready. One, two, three, four, five, diagonal line. So we have five, let's add on. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So using tally marks is a really good way to count by what? What do you think it would help us count by? By fives, because we can see groups of fives. So count with me by five, and then we'll see if we have to add on by ones. Ready? Five, 10, 15, 16, 17, 18. Good. Next, let's see if our number 18 is an even number or an odd number. Remember, if a number is odd, that means if I have a collection, a group of 18 things, and I put them all into pairs, or I make sure everything has a partner, then nothing would be by itself. Some, one would be by itself if, if it's odd. If it's even, nothing would be by itself. So let me make sure I said that right. If I have a group of 18, 18 toys, 18 rocks, and I count by twos, or I pair them all up, I want to make sure everything has a partner, and I have nothing left over, that's even. If I have one left over, then that's odd. Okay, make sure I said that right. So, I have my 10 frames that I made with stickers, and I have all together 18 stickers. Can you tell if I have a sticker by itself or if all the stickers have a pair or a partner. Hopefully you can see that all of the stickers have a pair up or a partner. I don't have one sticker by itself. So if all of our things have a pair or a partner, that makes it an even number. So 18 is an even number. And spell even with me, ready? Say it with me, E, V, E, N, even. Next, let's see what comes before and what comes after the number 18 so that we can make a list. So I always need to count from one up to see what comes before and what comes after 18. So count with me, ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, okay, seventeen, eighteen, 17, 18, 19. 17 comes before 18, and 19 comes after 18. So let me make a list. 17, comma, 18, comma, 19. 17 is before 18, and 19 is after 18. So lots of different ways to write the number 18, to think about the number 18. Next, let's look at our math facts. And so we are going to start with our group, our whole group. And today, our whole group, our number is 18. And then I want to think about parts that make up the number 18. Two numbers that when I add them together will equal 18. And when I take away from 18, I get the other number. 
how do I come up with these parts? So I want to show you how we can practice math facts another way. So I wrote down math facts for the number 18. Take a look at these. Do you notice anything? So I notice that the first number I wrote down for all of these math sentences are increasing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and I stopped at nine. What do you notice about the second number that I wrote down for each of these math sentences? I noticed they decrease. 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, and then I stopped at 9. And all of these math sentences equal 18. So I could have kept going. I could have kept going with 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. And I could have kept decreasing after 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and I even could have gone to 0. And so when I'm trying to think of all the different parts, the different numbers that would help me make 18, or if I subtract 1 from 18, I'm going to get the other, it's because I've been practicing my math facts. So I encourage you to practice your math facts and write all of your math sentences down because we also need to be able to read math just like we read words. So I am going to pick 8 and 10, this sentence right here, to help me with my math facts here, my family math facts. So I'm going to pick the number 8 and the number 10. So I'm going to start with the number 8. So if I have 8 stickers, rocks, toy cars, and I add 10 to my number 8 here, to that collection, then I am going to have 18. And this is a fact that I can show. And I want to show you with my 10 frame. If I have 8 dots and I add on 10, and we counted all of these up, I would have 18. What happens when we add and we switch the numbers? So this time, I'm starting with the number 10, and I'm adding 8. So I have my same 10 frames. This time I started with the number 10, and I added 8 more dots to that. And I will still have 18 when I count them all up. So when we're working with subtraction, we want to start with our entire collection, with our number of the day. And from that, I want to take away or subtract. I'll start with my number 8. So if I have 18, and this is 18 right here, and I'm going to subtract or take away 8, I'm left with a full 10 frame. I'm left with 10. So... Again, I'm going to start with my entire collection, my number of the day, 18. But this time, instead of subtracting 8, I want to subtract or take away 10. So again, I'm starting with my entire collection of stickers or rocks or toy cars. But this time, I'm going to take away 10. So I took away my 10 frame. And I'm left with 8. So just like I wrote down all of the math facts, or some of the math facts, I didn't finish. I could have kept going, actually, and written them for uh, the number 18. 
with addition, I can also write down math facts with subtraction. I always start with my number of the day, this time it's 18, and then I keep taking away until I don't have anything in my collection anymore. Hmm, so if I have 18, how many would I need to take away to not have anything in my collection anymore? I would have to take them all away. So what number would that be? 18. I'll write this separately right here. So if I have 18 and I take away or subtract everything in my collection, I'm not going to have anything. What number do we use to represent that we don't have something? Zero. Okay, so let's count up to the number of the day one more time, but this time in Spanish. Vamos a contar hasta 18 en español. Ready? Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve, diez, once, doce, trece, catorce, quince, dieciséis, diecisiete, dieciocho. Ahora vamos a contar en reversa. Let's count in Spanish backwards. Ready? Dieciocho. Diecisiete. Dieciséis. Quince. Catorce. Trece. Doce. Once. Diez, nueve, ocho, siete, seis, cinco, cuatro, tres, dos, y uno. Thank you for joining me today. Until next time, I hope you have a great day. Good morning, mathematicians, and welcome back to Math Games with Miss Kathy. I'm so happy to be your teacher here today. So if you remember from last week, we were graphing some results, and we're going to be continuing our work with graphing some collections of items. But I'm going to ask you, like I always do, to take a guess to estimate how many items are in our collection today. So inside of this glass bowl, I have some shapes that are made from foam. They are different sizes, and they're not all the same shape. So take a moment, and I want you to think about that number and to hold it in your brain. And if you're watching with a sibling or grown-up today, keep your guess Secret from them, you can write it down, because we're going to see who is the closest when they estimate. Now, I asked my friends, Mrs. B and Mrs. Q, how many they thought there would be today, and I went ahead and wrote down their answers. So I'm going to share with you what they said and what I said, too. So my friend, Mrs. B, she guessed that there are 22 items inside of this glass bowl. And my friend, Mrs. Q, she said 24. She thought that there would be more. And I disagreed with them. I thought there would be way fewer, and I said 15. But what about you? What's your guess? Let's find out how many there really are. So here are my, my collection, and we're going to count by twos today, which is really fantastic because we'll know if this number is even or odd if there's one left out. So let's count by twos, and remember, we always start at zero. So zero, we have nothing yet. Two, four, six, 
eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, and 22. So our answer was 22, and there are none left over. We counted by twos, and every single one of my shapes had a pair. Does that mean my number is even or odd? Hmm. Go ahead and tell somebody next to you. Do I have an even or odd number today? That's right. It's even. When every single number has its pair, just like Mrs. B was telling us, that means it's an even number. So the real answer for how many are there is 22. Let's look at our estimates again. Mrs. B said 22. She got it exactly correct. Her guess was equal to the real number. Mrs. Q said 24. Her number was a little bit higher. And mine was 15. It was much lower than the real number. What about you? Was your number close? Was it higher, lower, or were you exactly correct just like Mrs. B? So we have here our chart of our estimates. And remember, estimates is another word for our guess. What do we think it is, mathematicians? We're going to use this to answer our question of who had the closest estimate. And to find out, we are going to graph our results using the paper right behind me. Now, this is something you could do at home, too. What you would need is a blank piece of paper, and you would need to draw lines just like I have up here, and we would add our friends' names to the bottom. As we go about this, doing it up here, you could also do it at home. So we're going to answer our question, who had the closest estimate? And this is the title for my graph today, and I'm going to post it on my chart. Let's make our graph, friends. Who had the closest estimate? Using our chart, we said Mrs. B guessed 22. So if you look very carefully, I already wrote down over here little numbers going all the way up to 25 to show what our guesses would be. And my first one, oops, let me switch these around. I'm glad I put these on post-it notes so I can fix it. Whenever you're doing math, it's good to do it in pencil because we make mistakes sometimes and it'd be easy to erase. So Mrs. B said 22. So we're going to make our bar graph. We're going to start at zero and go all the way up to 22. When we get to 22, we're going to stop and bring that number all the way back down to show this was Mrs. B's guess. And we're going to label our graph by saying inside just exactly how many. So I put the number 22 very small inside of it as well. Now my friend Mrs. Q, she guessed 24, which was a little bit higher. So this bar is going to be taller than the one that represents Mrs. B's guess. So 22, 23, 24. Her guess was much larger. So I'm going to label that again, 24. It's a 2 and a 4. And then K, that's for Miss Kathy. I guessed 15. So mine's going to be much smaller. Oh, there we go. That was a little trickier for me. All right, friends. And I made two other spots that we're going to fill in, which is your guess. I want you to add yours to your chart. What did you guess? This is where your bar would go. And then I'm going to add one more bar to my graph, the real answer. I wrote the word real here. In reality, it was 22. And we're going to use this information to help us answer our question, which is the title of our graph. We want to know who had the closest estimate. All right, mathematicians. This is where we can use the information we see up here in our, in our graph to help us answer the question. 
Graphs should have a title that helps you look at it for information. In this case, the information we're looking for is who had the closest estimate. Well, the real answer was 22. And we can see who was closest. Well, that was Mrs. B, of course. She got it exactly correct. Who was next closest? Well, Mrs. Q was really close to our line for the real answer. She was the next closest. Whose estimate was the farthest away? That's right, it was Miss Kathy. I had the estimate that was the farthest away from what it really was. So graphs can help us answer questions. So looking at the shapes that I had inside of my jar today, it made me think of another question. Since there are so many different kinds of shapes, my brain was thinking about which shape is the most common inside of this collection today? Well, friends, let's find out. We want to answer the question, which shape is the most common inside of our collection? So the first thing we would have to do with our collection is sort it. We have to sort the shapes into the same types. So here I have a shape. It's yellow. The color doesn't matter. It doesn't change the shape. But let's count the sides on it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Do you know what this is called? Go ahead and tell somebody next to you you think you know what this is. This is a hexagon. So if you th said octagon, you may have been really close. That would be eight sides, but this one has six. Can you say hexagon? Good job, friends. So we have hexagons in here. And we have, ooh, what's this shape? It has one, two, three, four sides. And all of the sides are equal. Do you know what that's called? Go ahead and say it out loud. That's right, this is a square. We have squares inside of here. <gasps> Look at this. This is a hexagon, but it's smaller. Is it the same shape? Absolutely it is. So we can include that in our hexagon pile. What shape do you see here? That's right, friends, this is a circle. So we have circles. <gasps> what is this? Square, good. Ooh, I bet everybody knows this shape. It has three sides, and they're all the same length. This is a triangle. So I'm making my little piles of all of my different shapes so that once they're sorted, I can count them to answer the question, which shape is the most common in my collection? A couple more. Ooh, again, small shapes. The size of the shape doesn't change the name of the shape. And that's all of my shapes here, friends. So now I need to count to find out which shape is the most common. So I'm going to flip this around. Here's my question. What shape is the most common? So I have my hexagons. Let's count how many hexagons we have. One, two, three, four. We have four hexagons. So what I would like to do is make a chart to show a graph to show my results. And I'm going to use this paper over here. So I'm going to take my question, and I'm going to add it to the very top of my graph, because graphs give us information to answer questions. And our question is, which shape is the most common? And our first shape we just counted was a hexagon. Do you remember how many sides a hexagon has? That's right, friends. It has six. So I'm going to draw. And remember, our drawings don't have to be perfect. We just want to do our best. And we said that there were ooh, four hexagons. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to make a bar graph that says one, two, three, four. And I'm going to label that. I'm going to label it on top. There were four hexagons. All right, friends, let's count our next shape. We are done with our hexagons. Let's do triangles next. We have one, two, three, or five triangles. So we're going to add our shape down to the bottom of our graph, and we're going to graph our results. We had five triangles. One, two, three, four, five. And I'm going to label that number. That was five. And we are done with our triangles. Let's do squares next. All right, friends. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There are seven squares. Let's add that to our graph. We'll draw our square at the bottom. And we're going to graph it up to seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Good job, friends. That leaves one shape left, which is circle. Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six. We had six circles. I think you probably know the answer. Which shape is the most common? All right, friends. So our question that we wanted to answer is, which shape is the most common? And looking at our graph, we want to see which one had the most. Go ahead and tell somebody what the results are from our graph. That's right, friends. The square was the most common. That was the most common shape in my collection. So what we have from our two graphs is enough information to answer questions. And whenever you have a collection of items and you want to fill an empty bowl with items to count, you can make it into a graphing game. You can answer, ask questions and find the answers yourself. I'm thinking about my friend's buttons over here and how she has a collection of items. They're different sizes and shapes. And I think it'd be really fun to sort these into different categories, to different types of buttons, and to see which are the most common and to graph those results. So I want you to think about what are some items that you could count and collect wherever you are. I keep saying that rocks are a really great example because there's so many different types of rocks. They can be smooth or they can be rough. They can be angular meaning they have sharp edges. And I think that if you have a collection of rocks, that would be something really cool to count, to sort, and you could even do it by color. Another way we could look at the same shapes is instead of looking at them for what shape are they, we could also do it based on their color. So mathematicians, I want you to look at the world around you, look at the things that are around you, and I want you to think, how could that become math? And graphing is a really great way to do that. I hope you have a fantastic day. Up next, we have Miss Abby, who's going to do some more work with you mathematicians. Have a good day. Good morning. I'm Miss Abby. Today, we're going to talk about numbers. We always talk about numbers because numbers are great for organizing all sorts of things. Today, we're going to talk about ordinal numbers. Those are numbers that we use to put things in order. Have you ever been the first to do something? Think about in your class, in your family. Maybe you are running a race. Have you ever been last? I have. Have you ever been second to do something? In my family, I am the second child. My mommy and daddy had three children. My older brother was the first. I am the second. And my younger brother is the third child. First, second, and third are ways to organize things. In my family, that's how we organize the kids. What about your family? Are you the first child? Today, I'm going to read a book. It's called 10 Little Caterpillars. The author is Bill Martin Jr. Jr. means he's the second Bill Martin. It's illustrated by Lois Ellert. I love her illustrations. And this book is published by Scholastic. As I read this story, 
you're going to hear several ordinal numbers. I want you to pay attention to them. I hope your brain goes ding when you hear them. I wrote them on a list for you. First, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. I'll need my other hand. Seventh, eighth, ninth, and last, tenth. I need all ten fingers for that. Ten little caterpillars. Ten little caterpillars. I see all of these leaves with holes in them. I know that caterpillars like to eat leaves. The first little caterpillar crawled into a bower. The second little caterpillar wiggled up a flower. The third little caterpillar climbed a cabbage head. The fourth little caterpillar found a melon bed. I'm hearing lots of rhyming words, but also I'm hearing those order words or ordinal words. Fourth, fourth little caterpillar. The fifth little caterpillar sailed a garden pool. How fun. The sixth little caterpillar was carried off to school. Have you ever picked up a caterpillar before? On my walk recently, I saw a big furry caterpillar. I wanted to pick it up, but I didn't. The seventh little caterpillar met a hungry wren. I think this hungry wren wants to eat the seventh caterpillar. The eighth little caterpillar was frightened by a hen. I think the hen wants to eat that caterpillar too. The ninth little caterpillar fell into the sea. Right there. The tenth little caterpillar scaled an apple tree. And hung there patiently. Dot, dot, dot. It's almost like there's more to come until by and by the tenth little caterpillar dot 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 became a butterfly. That's the end of the story, but since this is an informational text, there's more information to come. One, morning cloak, caterpillar, feeds on tree leaves, nettles, and wild rose leaves. This is what the caterpillar looks like. And here's the butterfly. Two, buckeye. The caterpillar feeds on a variety of leaves, including snapdragon leaves. And here is the butterfly. Three, 
cabbage looper? Look at the caterpillar. It looks almost like a worm. It devours. Oh, that's such a good verb. It eats it so happily. It devours leaves like garden crops. And then it turns into a moth. The yellow bear, the caterpillar, chomps. Chomp, chomp, chomp. Leave, tree leaves and leaves of garden crops. These all like to eat a lot of garden crops. Number five is the yellow necked. The caterpillar feeds on tree leaves and it turns into a moth. Oh, I forgot to talk about the Virginian tiger moth. That's what the yellow bear caterpillar turns into. What an interesting transformation. This book had 10 little caterpillars. So we are halfway there. Number six, the monarch. That's the king of the caterpillars and butterflies. The caterpillar eats only milkweed. That's it, milkweed leaves, and turns into this beautiful butterfly. Have you seen one of these before? Number seven is the painted lady. The caterpillar feeds on thistle, thistle, and other plants such as daisies. It turns into this butterfly. It has very similar color to the monarch. Number eight is the woolly bear. I feel like this is the one that I saw on my walk. It was very, it looked fuzzy. The caterpillar eats many low-growing plants, grasses, and weeds, and turns into the Isabella tiger moth. What a wonderful name. Number nine is the common wood nymph. The caterpillar feeds on grasses in woods, meadows, and fields, and it turns into this butterfly. We've only got to nine, so they saved number 10. Number 10, the tiger swallowtail. The caterpillar eats shrub and broadleaf tree leaves. And this green caterpillar transforms into this tiger swallowtail. I've seen these in New Mexico. They're big, beautiful yellow butterflies. The tenth butterfly is the prettiest in my opinion. This book, 10 Little Caterpillars, tells about 10 different caterpillars in ordinal form. It uses these words to organize different caterpillars. I wanna make a book with you. Do you wanna make a book? I make lots of books. For this, You'll need some paper, plain paper, lined paper, graph paper, any paper will do. You just need some sheets of paper. I also need something to write with. This marker might be too big. This yellow might not show up very well. Hmm. I'll probably need something easy to read. I like this blue. I'll use this blue. Today I'm gonna write a book about something that's easy to find. Well, it's easy for me. I'm gonna write about 10 fingers. 10 fingers today. Now, they don't have numbers on them, but I can organize them. First, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, ten. Ten fingers. Now, they don't have names, they don't have numbers, but I want to organize them into what they can do. If I start with this little pinky, what is something that my pinky can do? I can wave hello. Look at this finger. Sometimes this finger is called the ring finger. 
I want to think about what this finger can do. It can scratch. This finger is wearing a ring. Do you have a ring on? This finger can point. This finger can call. This finger can do lots of things. I'm going to write a book about all the different things that my fingers can do. Are you ready? Good. I'm going to write in marker because it's easy for you to see. But you might want to write in pencil so that you can erase or work boldly. Don't erase with a marker. It's up to you. I want to think about my cover page. Ten little fingers. Well, I'm a grown-up, so my fingers aren't so little. So I'm going to put my fingers on my front page and I'm going to trace my fingers. You might need help or you might not. I'm going to pay, um, put part of my hand on the paper. One, two, three, four, five fingers. I need five more. Here they are. I'm going to place my fingers. This is a little tricky, but I'm going to trace this hand next. One, oh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, wow, I have marker all over my fingers. Oh, well, the price you pay for art. I have ten fingers on my paper. I'm going to use my chart to also write these words. I will start with this first pinky finger and I'm going to write the word first. F-I-R-S-T. F-I-R-S-T. First. Second. Second. S-E-C. O-N-D, S-E-C-O-N-D, second, third, third, T-H-I-R-D, T-H-I-R-D, next, fourth, fourth, F-O-U-R-T-H, Fourth, my thumb is going to be my fifth, fifth, oh, my tongue gets a little tied, F-I-F-T-H, F-I-F-T-H. Am I going too fast? I like to sing when I spell, so sometimes I go a little quick. Now, my next thumb is going to be my sixth, sixth finger, S-I-X-T-H. This finger will be my seventh, that's a pretty long one, S-E-V-E-N. Just like the number seven, S-E-V-E-N-T-H. This finger will be my eighth finger, E-I-G-H-T, H, eighth. My ninth finger, N-I-N-T-H. And last, my tenth finger. It has the word ten, t, t, T-E-N-T-H, ten. I used my chart to help me write on my fingers. Then I want to write my title. Instead of 10 little caterpillars, 10 little fingers. 10 little fingers. Since I'm the author, I get to write my name by 
Abby by Abby. I'm also the illustrator and the publisher too. So I'll keep it simple. For each page, I'm going to put a new number on it. 10 little fingers. So I'll start with my first. Just to help me, I'm gonna write down in the corner first. This helps me get my writing organized. First, F-I-R-S-T, first. Sometimes my brain needs a little planning time, so I'm just going to write first. Next, second, S-E-C-O-N-D, second. Remember, I'm the second child in my family, second. Third, T-H-I-R-D, T-H-I-R-D. Do your shoulders shake when you count or spell? Sometimes mine do. I'm organizing my papers. It will help me with my writing. When I'm thinking about these numbers, it's also math. Do you see how math is a part of everything? As I'm writing my numbers, first, second, third, what comes next? You're right, fourth. F-O-U-R-T-H, fourth. Wow, I have a lot of pages in my book already. Fifth, F-I-F-T-H. First, second, third, fourth, fifth. Now we're on to sixth. It has the letter X in it. Sixth. I'm on my sixth different page. Sixth. Seventh. That's a long one. S E V E N T H. I'm glad I have this chart to help me too. Eighth, E-I-G-H-T-H. Oh, I'm almost done, just with my planning. Ninth, and I ran out of paper. I know what I'll do. I'll write on the back of the ninth page. I'll write tenth. T-E-N-T-H, 10th. Am I done with my book? Not yet. Now, I'm going to talk about what each of my fingers do. But what I like to do when I plan is then I can choose which page I want to work on first. I'm going to talk about my last page first. 10 little fingers. What can you do with 10 fingers? 10 little fingers, 10 little fingers. We've been washing our hands a lot. We've been hugging our moms. We've been petting our dogs. Do you have a cat at home? I bet your cat likes to be scratched under their chin. I'm going to think 10 little fingers to tickle you with. 10 little fingers. So, tenth, the tenth little finger I'm going to look at my book. It said the tenth little finger became a butterfly. I like that word became. B-E-C-A-M-E. -E. Became. 
a tickle. Ton of fingers. I'm gonna need more time for my book, so keep creating at home. Thank you so much for joining us today with APS at Home. Have a great day.